Hello everyone and welcome to the Tiger revision video. So I've decided to create this revision video for this poem because I know that a lot of students struggle with it. So let's have a go at it. First things first, we need to have some information about the poet. Now I'm not one of those teachers who believe that you have to know everything about the poet. However, you have to know at least something to make things easier for yourself. So let's have a look at William Blake. Okay, so he was born in 1757 in London, which is of course is in in United Kingdom. He was a very religious man, and when he was ten, he believed that he saw a tree full of angels, and he sat down under and began speaking to them. Okay, he was a poet and an artist, and we can see on the screen there his work. Um, in you know he used to paint and draw all these illustrations for his poetry book and he died in 1827 now that's really all that I want you to know about the poet okay I want you to know just a little bit about himself so when he was born and when he died of course you need to know um, that he was a re re very religious man because I think that idea is pivotal here and of course you need to know that he's a poet and an artist as well Okay. Now, before looking at this poem, I think it's also important to know, and obviously very helpful as well, uh, what London was like at that particular era. Okay. And of course, um, this is going to be coming from Blake himself. Okay. So the man that lived at that time. Okay. Uh, so more about London. Uh, we can see on the screen his poem called London, and we can see how he illustrated that as well. Now, London was not a place of happiness at the time, and that was perhaps due to poverty. It was a very dark city, of course, metaphorically speaking. There was also a fear of social revolution, just like there was in France, where, of course, um, the common people rose against um, the monarchy and the lords and of course began the bloody um, shed okay, uh, of you know, power. Um, so let's look at how Blake saw London at that particular era. So everywhere that he went he saw people and on people's faces he could see marks of weakness, marks of woe. So we could really see uh, grief, sadness and distress there. Now what causes grief, sadness and distress? Uh, well it perhaps was the people who planned everything for them. Okay, So uh, perhaps it was the monarchy, it might have been kings, royal lo royals and lords that obviously planned everything uh, for the people and they weren't really happy about that or perhaps they were brainwashed into believing that they were happy. Okay. Of course, London was a very noisy place too, because the air, according to Blake, of course, was full of crying, shouting, cursing and shrieking. Um, not only that, but really could hear, as he says, um, trapped minds you could see. So the mind forged manacles I hear. So people perhaps were believed brainwashed into thinking that everything was fine, but really when you looked at them, you realised that perhaps um, everything was not okay. Okay, so London wasn't um, a happy place like we imagine it to be uh, now. Okay, now moving on, I think it's always good to remember that there's no one correct interpretation of a poem. As long as you have uh, quotations and you back it up with analysis, you should be fine. So the first interpretation that I think fits in perfectly with this poem uh, is that the poem is about the power of God, as he's able to create such a beautiful beast, such as a tiger. Uh, and of course, tiger is able to destroy everything that comes into its path. Okay, obviously, obviously tigers are very, very fierce creatures and they're very strong as well. And perhaps Blake is wondering here, you know, why God created this creature. Now, the second interpretation that I think fits in perfectly with this poem as well is that the tiger might be the social revolution. Okay, the tiger is different and not many people would have seen the tiger. There would be no zoos to go into and see the tiger. And perhaps um, Blake is using the tiger as a kind of extended metaphor um, for social revolution. Okay, it's also very dangerous, perhaps just like the revolution itself. Now let's look at the summary okay, um, of this poem. Okay, so stanza number one, the speaker um, asks the tiger what kind of being created it. Okay, we know that perhaps the speaker is looking at God because the speaker uses the word immortal. Okay, um, now stanza number two, the speaker is wondering from what cosmos or what universe the tiger's eyes have come from. Okay, we kind of get the feeling that the speaker is thinking um, that tiger wasn't born naturally. Okay, it wasn't a you know like 
any other birth that um, the creator went to um, the depths of hells and having to gather all of this uh, objects to create the tiger. Okay, so that's number three. Once again, he thinks, uh, he begins to think as, you know, what kind of physical being could have twisted the nerves to the tiger's heart? Tigers, of course, are very ferocious beings. So therefore, who could have had the courage, okay, um, to do so? Stanza number four, uh, I think that's the most important part of um, this particular poem because we have a lot of industrial imagery here to indicate that the birth of the tiger was not natural. The tiger was created. We have the hammer, we have the chain, the furnace, the anvil, okay? And of course, we can kind of imagine a blacksmith's hut hut where of course he's hammering at the tiger we just gather all these possessions and um, maybe that's an extended metaphor for God God is like a blacksmith hammering at the tiger creation okay something that perhaps is not a natural creature Science number five, we have reference to the angels who are stars and perhaps are looking at a tiger. The speaker is wondering who could have made this ferocious creature. But of course, the speaker is also wondering how um, the creator is feeling. Did he smile his work to see? When he created the tiger, was he smiling or was he actually afraid? And of course, there's a reference to the lamb there as well. Now, the lamb might represent the goodness, the tiger, the evil. Um, as I've already stated, you should probably look at the lamb, the poem lamb to see what Blake has to say about the lamb, okay? And stanza number six is, of course, very important because um, the tiger, the poem up to stanza six, okay, it's almost like a journey. He wonders about uh, every aspect of the tiger and the creation of it. And then in stanza six, now he has come to the solution that God has created this beast, but he wonders why, okay? So it's like a journey. Okay, he begins. He at start he thinking who 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 who, and then he comes to create comes to the solution that yes, it was God, but why did he create um this beast? Okay, so let's move on to what you need to do when approaching poetry. Okay, and um, remember when you're approaching poetry, you should always slime it. If you cannot remember how to do it or you haven't seen it, then perhaps you should uh, consider watching Approaching Poetry uh, video first, okay? because I think that will be very, very helpful to you. And also remember that you should take a couple of minutes uh, to slime it in your exam. So what does slime stand for? Structure, language, imagery, meaning and effect. And as I stated already, one of my helpful tips is in the exam, take a couple of minutes to slime it. Once you, you think, yeah, I have the slime, I know what it's looking at what I need to know then of course continue writing your answer. Now uh, I have a mini activity of course for you um, and really uh, what I want you to do is just deposit the screencast and slime it. Take five to ten minutes um, to do it um, and then of course return to the video. Why should you do it? Well because you learn by doing it and not by copying others. So really have a go. Don't be scared. Okay. Once you finish press play and check your answers and good luck. Welcome back. So before the pause, I asked you to um, obviously complete this mini activity. So let's see what um, you got. Okay. So let's look at the structure first. Okay. First of all, we noted that there is a very harsh pattern, and of course that is used to emphasise the creation of the tiger. Now we can see that the author uh, William Blake is using trochaic tetrameter. Okay. It's like a hammering beat. So tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night okay uh, and that's really almost like a blacksmith here who of course is hammering the tiger out okay um of course another thing that you need to remember for structuring is the refrain of the first stanza and the last okay if you look at first stanza and stanza number six as well you can see that they're actually the same thing. The only thing that is different is um, one word. In the first stanza, we can see it's could, and then the last stanza, it's dare. Okay, that's also called a recomposition. Okay, it's repeated for a purpose, and of course, in exam, you have to think about why it's repeated. Okay. And of course, you can see that there are two rhyming couplets per stanza, so skies, eyes, aspire, and fire. Now, moving on to language, of course, there are many other language devices here, but I think the most important ones are the repetition of tiger. We can see how many times it's being repeated, especially in stanza 1 and stanza 6. We can see rhetorical questions in almost every single stanza. Actually, in every single stanza, we can see rhetorical questions. So, for example, on what wings dare he aspire? 
okay um metaphors the deeps and the skies you might say they are illusions as well um and of course you can see personification here as well when the stars threw down their spears okay perhaps it might be biblical a reference to um the angels and of course lucifer fighting so the fight between heaven and hell now, of course, what is emerging to us right now is that asking questions is the central idea here, okay? Um, Blake doesn't know the answers, but he's asking the questions, okay? So the imagery, um, of course, the tiger is uh, is one massive image, image um, and we can see the bright colors standing out against the darkness of the forest, so burning bright. Some of you might say that's perhaps because uh, the tiger is angry, it might be burning, or some of you might say that actually it's the color of the fur coat, okay? And we can see the most kind of important one, uh, in my opinion, is that Blake almost uh, refers to God um, like a blacksmith. Okay, uh, who is of course using the hammer and the chain, and perhaps um, of course putting the brain in the furnace, okay, and then pounding it against the anvil. Um, so God is like a creator, and of course in this case is like a, a blacksmith creating out of iron or other kind of um, metals, uh, something that is very very strong. Okay, and of course the meaning, we have the good versus evil, perhaps tiger represents uh, the evil that's in the world and the lamb might represent uh, the goodness. And perhaps this is just Blake's way of asking, uh, why did God create such a destructive beast? What could be the purpose of him having this strong, uh, terrorist, aggressive beast? Now the effect obviously would be different in every single one, um, every single person. Uh, some of you might be wondering what what happened to Blake that he decided to write um, such a obviously interesting poem? Perhaps you might be astonished, okay, that he refers to um, God like a blacksmith, or perhaps you might feel a bit of sadness as well. Now, remember, it doesn't matter what effect you got, but it has to be something personal, and as long as you can explain it, it should be fine. Now, another tip I have for you is to remember that it's not enough to just list the devices in the exam. If you just uh, list the devices like it's a shopping list, okay, you're not going to get um, the best grades. So you need to explain them. So if you decided that you wanted to look at repetition of the tiger, of course you can say um, you know, that repetition is being used, uh, but you have to explain why repetition is being used. You might say you know, repetition is being used of the word tiger because um, Blake is doing such and such, okay, so really you have to think of what is the purpose of that device being used there. Okay, so let's move on and look at a deeper meaning, okay. Um, now, if you feel, um, you know, that Blake is looking at God and just wondering about God, that's perfectly fine, then you'll have to go and, of course, uh, focus on that. However, this perhaps focuses on the revolution itself, okay, because looking at London poem, and of course, looking at what happened at at that period of time, um, I feel that revolution, of course, is quite important here as well. So perhaps tiger represents revolution itself. Okay, the black and the orange of the fur coat might represent the danger that people are in, or perhaps wild streets where the revolution could start at any moment. Um, maybe. Blake is even asking God why he's allowing this to happen, okay? The dark forest might represent the common ideas at the time, uh, while the tiger could represent revolution seekers, perhaps. The tiger is uh, the evil being, okay? And that might be revolution seekers, perhaps, okay? And we can see the conflict between deeps and skies or hell and heaven okay good and bad goodness versus evil and so on and so forth okay so if you feel it's about god of course you can go back and then look at your ideas and see how they fit of course i think there's a bit of both in this particular poll as well now um, we've come to the end of this video i hope that it helped you to if not understand everything then to start thinking and questioning more because that's really the purpose of this poem as we've seen is to question OK, what I would like you to do now is to think about what you've learned or revised uh, from this video 
and I would like you to say it out loud or write it down. This should only take you a couple of seconds to do. And of course, I hope that um, you do, you have learned something which you haven't known, whether that he was, you know, more about Blake's life or what the poem might be about or a different interpretation. Okay. Um, and if you feel that you really enjoy this or you like some more help, please visit my blog at gigantite.wordpress.com. Okay. Best of luck in your exams and bye bye.